Right on Monday morning, welcome to a bloody another week. He's all had a pissy weekend and stayed off the darts. Boys, what do we got today? Gina, a lot of rumours whirling around that she's good to go again today with Lion Town, so we'll Where touch on she? that. Bit of money went in on Friday too. Lion Town were up ten percent. A bit of bloody dumb money going in, hoping <laughs> on a bloody hoping on something happening, I think. Uh, we're gonna to touch on the Metals Acquisition Corp IPO. Uh, if you can, if you can sort of call it that, their Aussie IPO. That was acquisition limited. Now, JD. limited. Mac. Yeah, we can't wow. call it Mac the SPAC. Mac the SPAC. It's not <laughs> <laughs> what else have we got, fellas? We're going to touch on Stanmore and South Thirty Two. There's a bit of a, a transaction happening there, immaterial for South Thirty Two, but I think there's a bit more to it than that. And uh, mate, the battle for Nine Zaga goes on. I'm going to provide a bit of an, a bit of an update. Things are getting a little bit feisty. Some uh, some low blows, a, little, a few jabs here and there. Oh, so, I like it. I'm going to. Re- I'll, I'll touch on as a North American correspondent. Here. I'll, I'll touch on Kamiko's results, not in detail, but uh, just what's going on. I love Very it, mate. interesting looking at their realised price going forward. Let's get to it. Right. Now, boys, you know we love a skit. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, don't we love a skit? JD, the most of all, loves acting. Loves it. Uh, we're, born, we're born for the theatre. Now, we thought, great, great uh, idea from Mr Rick Ardinio. We thought we could, uh, instead of just first presenting verify we could present old school investor presentation yeah we've seen a few of these how it looks now that we know this stuff's out here let's go okay so, trav can be the uh I'll set, set the, the MD set the scene yeah I'll, I'll be the uh the MD that is I'm wedded to my ways mate I'm, I'm I'm here to tell the story I've come to the you know stockbroking firm I'm talking to the brokers I'm trying to get you guys excited about so the I'm the prospective investor <laughs> right oh yeah me and I'll be a fundy as well me and JD the <laughs> okay, fundies right. you're presenting to us trying to pitch a stock righto okay Mr Rick Ardinio MD uh give us some good reasons of hey, why well, to invest in your company uh, oh Matthew yeah uh, well if you, um, <clears throat> I've brought with me the investor presentation of the pro- project. Oh, this will uh, be interesting. <clears throat> if, you, if you flick to page five, you'll see the investment highlights. And uh, <clears throat> oh, which? Where oh. is it? Uh, it's, pa- uh, pa- uh, it's page page five. Page five. Oh. Page five, Matthew. And if you can see there, the project overview. It's on uh, two oh. hundred kilometres of uh, continuous hey, JD, sh- strike. Can you shoot me, please? There's, if there's a cross <laughs> section here, I promise you, I oh. include a cross section. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Can you just? Take this iPad and get up your Verify model, please. Huh? Oh, wait, you don't have it? I don't have a, I don't have a Verify model. Well, you're not getting my money then. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's all you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. That is all you need to know. Why, why take a bloody, oh, get this bloody power back in. I didn't charge it over the weekend. Why, why take a risk and just not get money from funds or anything from a two-dimensional paper flapping presentation when you can utilise the power of Verify. That's it. If it's you want, a no-brainer. If, if you want investors, you want, you know, the, the broking community and all them to actually understand what's going on, just get Verify. Over oh. the last seven days, Matty, I had a couple of uh, couple of people reach out to me in the finance world. So these are, these oh, are people you? These are people who don't um, – they're not – then they're in the finance world, but they're obviously doing mining finance, and they're not across the geology like um, like the, the geos are. And they said to me, "I didn't understand what a cross section was until I looked at a verify model." So, <laughs> oh, happy to happy to be of I'm service. Not sure what the read through is, <laughs> <laughs> but I was still buying the stocks. Oh, I love it, mate. Josh from Verify is in town this week, mate. If anyone wants to catch up with him. Give him a buzz. Uh, emails in the show notes, josh at verify.com. Mate, they've even got well, another link in the show notes. They've got a bloody gig going. Head of business development. Mate, the the bloody ads in the show notes, if you want to work with Verify, mate, because mm-hmm. tell you what, after the validation we're providing, what an <laughs> opportunity, I say. Mate, hit them up for a job and we're even... Perth-based, they want, they want someone in Perth who is, um, you know, that building the relationship cross sections. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, and we're also having uh, we're having some verified drinks on uh, Friday at Mayfair. Uh, RSVP things in the show notes just for companies. If you want to come and uh, meet the team and inquire about the product, it's not a bloody free for all invitation. To anyone that wants to drink free piss, uh, that's just a fan of the show. But, but any any companies that were, want to inquire, come come enjoy some sherbets on behalf and, of Verify. And JD can't wait to hear your story. 
Yeah, just <laughs> come and pitch up. <laughs> come, come. We'll be there all afternoon. <laughs> Tell how great your story is, mate. Just verify, taken, taken investor presentations to the next to the three D level it needs to be. Best way to showcase all bodies, geofiz, geofiz, and your mind to investors. And mate, they're not just presentation mob lads. They analyze the data, collate it, turn it into the models. It's a bloody, as I say. A turnkey solution. Turnkey. <laughs> Thank you, Verify. Mate, and that's the thing about Verify models, they're good, they're brilliant, but, mate, good for fuck all without drill holes. Mm, that's actually true. Uh, you yeah. can't walk before you can crawl. So, <laughs> look, if you want Verify to showcase the ore body you haven't found yet, mm. get bloody K-Drill to find it for you. <laughs> mate, simple as that. Well, RC, you- Diamond, Air Core, all the surface drilling needs. Mate, you showed me a great action shot of Rhino Sullivan... Of now, as we know, there was that myth created about Ryan drilling with his bare hands. I did hear that one. Now I've come across this article, uh, this uh, image. Looks like it's coming out of Chat GPT or something. <laughs> Here he is. Look at the big fella in action. There's obviously some downtime on the rig, and mate, he has just grabbed it and he is raring to go. Look at him, <laughs> Ryan. Oh, so look at the forearms on him. Look at the <laughs> definition. He actually has very similar forearms to that. So, mate, what if type you, of drill is that one, Matty? Oh, I don't think it's, uh, it's like a water pressure. It looks drill? like a bloody air leg, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, the water's just in there, ready to go. Look at him. Look at the big fella go. Mate, K-drill, mate, anything, anything surface drilling, uh, mate, they've got custom, customised hydraulic rigs. Uh, mate, they are, m- can bloody drill a hole, them guys. So, mate, if there's any, if you've got an ore body there, they're going to be the ones to find it. Even if you don't have one, they might find one. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very Brexy. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you don't think there's one there, Kay drill will it. not sprinkle gold on your core. <laughs> mate, hit them up. Anything. Mate, the, the diamond division has started, mate. Plenty more coming out of there. Love your work, Kay drill. Surface drill and experts. Love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Love it. Right, eh? Let's talk about Line Town, guys. Line Town. So, what's, so let's take our step back, boys. Why are we talking about it today? Well, mate, the. This was, um, I think it's potentially the, you know, the headline story for today and it's not actually news because there's, it's an absence of news. There's no, where, where is Gina? She's nowhere to be found. And why is this, um, why is this a, a story? She's because probably in court with the kids today or something. <laughs> or, or the royalty. I don't know. Um, okay, so, so, so if you cast your mind back uh, for four months ago, do you remember when Albemarle was doing due diligence and Gina's buying shares on market in Lion Town, all the way up to three dollars per share. Well, the last day that she purchased shares on market at three bucks per share was the eleventh of October last year. Why is that date important? Because we've got these rules in M and A that you're not allowed to lodge a takeover bid at a price lower than you have purchased shares in the last four months. So Gina paid shares for, at three bucks. Over four months ago, just today, today's the 12th of February, so that's over four months ago. Now, there's been a bunch of, um, I call it hopium in the uh, in the Liontown community, and I'm, I'm trying to make a pun with, with Gina's middle name. I was about <laughs> to say hope, right? I was, I, like if, I was wondering if you'd started that or is that just on the Twitter sphere? <laughs> you are pushing this one out there. Uh, I haven't seen that one, but yeah. So, and I think there's a bit of hopium that Gina will come and kind of maybe lob a, lob a bid here for 100% of uh, Lion Town today now that it's been four months. And we haven't seen that yet as of, uh, as of well, 11 a.m. that we're recording right now. Normally you'd expect some some uh, information of that sort to be out pre-market. It's not mm. there. The stock fell 4% today. But the interesting thing was when you actually looked at uh, Lion Town's share price in the lead up at the back end of last week, it ran pretty hard. It ran, look, I'm- uh, Friday up yeah. 10, 10 plus percent. I yeah. mean, all the way from about 95 cents all the way to about $1.14 during- the week, which was um, pretty pretty noticeable. And I think we'd heard, um, you know, the, the thesis that people are buying in anticipation of this day arriving, but sometimes it's a, you know, buy the rumour, sell, sell, sell the news kind of event. And I kind of thought um, the most likely outcome here would be that it's a non-event because um, like what what rush is Gina in, right? Like mm. why, why, why has she got to do something now all of a sudden? She, she's got she's done absolutely no rush. She's got more and more leverage as time goes on and they don't have a funding solution. Yes, and the the question is, will she provide funding? But as we know, she's not really renowned for that, more taking equity stakes. I don't, I 
can't remember of a recent situation where she's actually provided funding. So, yes, as you, as you said, that because that funding solution, that's the overhang on the share price. That, that is one of the big overhangs. Until they sort that out, there's going to be a bit of pressure on it. Um, will she wait till it goes down to 90 and chuck 30% on that? Who knows? Mm. Who, who knows? What do you think is going to happen? I, th- I think you've answered the question there pretty well, Trav. She is in no rush. She has the power. She has the cash. Lion Town just need to keep executing. They can't have any slip-ups in construction along the way. And whilst the lithium price is at eight eight hundred and fifty bucks, you know it's going to be hard going even once you turn it on to to get cash. So that working capital shortfall is going to be, you know remain a, a big issue for the company. So this one could play out over a number of months. You know I wouldn't expect anything oh, immediately. It could be a year. Like if, if you think about the the sort like the prediction out there that maybe lithium might be pretty flat or something till China start restocking inventories for the next however, six, nine, 12 months, different different consensus in different analyst reports. They're going to go into production. They're going to go through commissioning, typical part of the Lassonde curve. Uh, it's never going to really – not many start lifting during commission. Uh, there's usually a bit, of a, a bit of a cycle to go through there. So could she be waiting for all of that to happen and then People who execute get involved. really, really well do, do have an uplift in um – through commissioning, think of Capricorn. They just mm. kept, kept running because they executed so well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> a bit more of a straightforward project. I think yeah, Carla exactly. uh, got a whole of all flotation plant. So lithium is yeah. notoriously a lot more complex than trying to get a gold processing plant going with a company um, that had done it before, or yeah, a management yeah. set that had done it before. And then obviously lithium is very, very new in yep. terms of what gold plants are. So. New generation. Yes, but uh, a lot of people bloody working hard to make sure that doesn't happen, but you can't – there's some things you just can't foresee. Hey, mate, what do you reckon um, – remember how I floated the idea that, that Pilbara could provide, provide a funding solution? Mm. What if what if it's like a, you know, Pilbara via via Oz, Oz Super's support yeah. provide a funding solution? That would be pretty interesting. Aussie Super kind of, you mm. know – They've got a the problem of having too much cash. <laughs> 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 oh, but look at how many parties have been involved then. You're going to have Gina on there. You're going to have Pilbara involved. Your SQM, no doubt, with their partnership with Gina in Andover will be uh, the, mm. some sort of alignment there and that'd be whether they're looking as well. Like there's yeah. a – it could – it if could, I was, could in time really heat up. If I was Pilbara though, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be – super interested in the equity, I'd want to provide the debt because that gives you leverage over Gina, who, own, who, who only owns the equity. So um, if if Aussie Super found a way to provide, to make that all happen, um, that'd be interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So as we, as we said, clap your hands, hands off to Tony <laughs> Hermanus Rivera for Andover because <laughs> that is the one project that has just stayed there because that deal is effectively bulletproof now. So... Very mm. interesting. Yep. Yep. Very interesting, mate. And um, what is also interesting is the Battle for Nine Saga. I don't know if you've been following this one, Matty. Oh, just just casually. I usually wait for you to entertain me with the regard, <laughs> Dinio. What is happening? Percy has put out the bit of statement today. Yeah, it was, it was a supplementary one, um, which basically means, yeah, a few, a few um, modifications or updates versus the last one. And it's not quite the Battle for Leonora just yet, Matty and JD, but there's a bit of heat in this fight nonetheless. So... I'm going to pose a question to the both of you before I go into the weeds a little bit. Which number is superior, fifty three point four cents or fifty five cents? Which which one which one do you want more? What are the conditions, mate? Fifty three point four. If you're shorting it, <laughs> if you're giving me cash, obviously I take the higher right here and now. But it's never that simple, is it? It's cash fifty five. Which do you want the cash fifty five? Do you want do you the want? cash and the higher? <laughs> oh, in that case, definitely. Superior it is. Okay, I'm, I'm glad we could determine that one. So <laughs> Percy has dropped their supplementary today, like I said, and they've taken a few jabs at the independent experts' findings in the uh, Orcorp statement. I'm gonna, I've highlighted a, a, a quote from, um, from Percy's uh, release today. I'm going to read it out. They say, despite BDO's preferred value of the Silver Corp offer being below Percy's cash consideration of $0.55 cents per share, the IER, the Independent Expert Report, BDO, they conclude that they do not consider the offer to be superior to the Silver Corp offer. But, but JD, you just said it is superior. Yeah. I, I say it's superior. Matty says it's superior. Read, we all clearly read, read on for me. Read on. I'm not a big accounting firm or anything, uh, but I'm keen to hear it. 
<laughs> they, uh, they follow it up with this. In arriving at this determination, BDO references other factors outlined in Section 14.3 of the IER. Perseus believes that the only relevant factor um, identified by BDO in Section 14.3 is the progress of the FCC approval. Now, that... Is um, that the bloody... Reg- the regulatory approval. Regular, yeah. In Tanzania, yeah. So Perseus, they're in the process of receiving that approval, which they say they expect to receive by the end of February. Um, I went to the Orcorp target statement to read what the independent expert had actually written to support the claim that the Silver Corp offer was superior, which, like we concluded, isn't, <laughs> in, in our opinion. Uh, the two things in that, that the independent expert lent on to defend the Silver Corp offer versus Perseus was, number one, uncertainty of the regulatory approvals, and number two, you know, they were measuring Silver Corp's offer over a longer time frame. Um, today's announcement from Perseus pushes back on the regulatory approvals part there. And if you, if you just zoom out, though, right, just think about what's really happening here rather than getting into the, the minutiae of the details. It's all just games. Orcorp are standing by the Silver Corp offer as superior, I think, to try and force Perseus to provide a value uplift from the 55 cent uh, mark, even though 55 cents is better than the Silver Corp offer already. And Perseus today are pushing back on the regulatory approvals piece to try and force a recommendation switch without having to lift the price of their offer. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, the with the Silver Corp deal, because there's script, do they need 75% approval for the Silver Corp deal, but only 50% for the Perseus no, cash? No, both, both are a takeover mechanism. So both both have similar conditionality, minimum okay. acceptance, 50.1%. Um, yeah, so both. Ah, right so uh, one's yeah. not a scheme. Yeah, they're both takeover offers now. Um, but like all of these games are supported by the the nonsense written by the independent expert, in my opinion. Like <laughs> the independent expert is literally willing to write here and defend the the Silver Corp offer as superior, even though like you don't you only have to go to third grade to figure out that it's not superior. <laughs> you don't have to no. be a fucking genius. Um, so the battle for nine saga continues. Let's see what happens next. I can't imagine very many of All Corp's shareholders will choose to accept the Silver Corp offer when they can sell their shares on market today for more instead. Um, either the Orcorp board will have to switch their recommendation or Perseus will provide a minor uplift in value. And especially considering the Silver Corp script has been in a pretty heavy decline in uh, of recent years. So, yeah, that's another factor. Yeah. Very, very <clears throat> interesting. Not just recent years as well, since the the bid specifically was, mm. was announced, it's fluctuated and it's come from the equivalent of high 50 cents for Perse- uh, for Orcorp now to where you said it was, Trav, 53 and a bit. Right, Mac the SPAC, not anymore. It's Mal the whatever. The, I've got to think about The it. copper mining company. <laughs> Mal the copper mining company. So we've heard quite a bit about this one and I'm, I'm sure you guys have been following it, but plenty of articles have been written in the, in the past week alone. So what we're specifically talking about is the IPO. They're going to be floating here. It's been rumoured to be happening for a long time. I was reading through the prospectus. And it had sort of had to jog my memory that they first agreed to pick up the CSA copper mine in uh, early 2022, so almost two years ago now. So it's been a long time coming. So for those unfamiliar, I'll just run through what, what the company and the asset are all about. So Metals Acquisition Corp was a star-studded SPAC, a special purpose acquisition vehicle formed in the heyday of SPACs in 2021. They agreed, like I said, to buy the mine from Glencore in 2022 planning to produce about 44,000 tonnes of copper. They sell it as a copper concentrate and expect this to sort of rise. So the the plant at the CSA mine has capacity for 1.9 million tonnes per annum, but it's only been running at roughly 60% of that, between 1.1 and 1.3 million tonnes per annum for, for quite a while. Glencore have owned the mine since 1999 for about 24 Yes. So, so you say it's one of the it's one of the highest was one of the highest grade copper mines in the world. Um, very yeah. but very deep. About I think it's close nearly 1, as deep as yeah, about as deep as Guali. Well, but they got a shaft. But yeah, very deep, very hot. Yeah, couple shafts. Yeah, very very hot is something we've heard quite a bit. And just on the um, the reserves and resources, they're they're looking at a potential cut off grade reset, and that would you know in turn help lift the tonnage and get that closer to the one point nine million ton per annum capacity that the asset has. So reading through the prospectus, there was some language that was really interesting. In the, in the first few pages, when they're talking about their strategy and everything, they really try and emphasize that CSA is a foundational asset and that M&A is well and truly the name of the game of this company. They're saying things like 
Mac, their strategy is to look at external growth, inorganic growth, acquire and invest in mining and exploration projects and companies. So you, you couldn't really go a page without seeing that that strategy of acquiring and growing a multi-asset business is what they're going to try and execute on. And top of the list for the, the risks was an interesting one. The deferred consideration payable, that was the first thing they listed there. That will, you know, be addressed by some way by the, the equity raise that's been upscaled to $325 million with the listing of the CDIs here in Australia. So the acquisition to remind people of how much they paid for this asset, US $1.1 billion was the price tag, $1.05 billion cash plus 5 million shares in Mac. Plus and they, they overbid IGO to get it, didn't they? They did. It was... Um, it was competitive up until, you know, from memory, February 2022, but these guys won out. And there's also a 1.5% royalty chucked in. So the upfront component was $775 million in cash, $225 million in deferred payments. Plus you got the royalty. Glencourt naturally took 100% of the off cake and became 20% shareholders in the process. How did Metals Acquisition Corp finance this? You got cash, equity, and a very creative range of different debt instruments. So US 205 million in senior debt, US 135 million in mezzanine debt from Sprott, a copper stream, a silver stream, a whole bunch of different things. So like I said, this capital raising, $325 million, a good chunk, 130 of that will go straight away out the door to Glencore. That is one of the deferred conditions. In June, they're also going to have to chuck up roughly $37 million to replace the, the Glencore rehab liability. And going through the use of funds, the rest of it goes towards, you know, development, exploration, all these sorts of things, as you'd sort of expect a company to say. Well, well I, saw, I saw the use of funds there, JD, and I was hoping that there would be m more of an allocation to actually reduce the the. The, the debt. The debt. I mean, th there's a use of funds there to pay the deferred consideration, but that's not actually paying down. Um, you know, the the Mez facility, for example, which under you know certain copper price has a has a margin of twelve percent on top of Sofa. So I think Sofa's like f still five percent. So that's seventeen yeah. percent paying on that Mez facility. Hefty. Which is US one hundred and thirty five million, which is you know still drawn. Just the spots kind of. Yeah, there. and I, it's, I would have hoped they'd reduce some of that quantum. It's a bit counter to the narrative that we'd heard. Everyone said they're going to, they've just got to delever the balance sheet. They need to raise a chunk of cash. It'll look healthier once they're listed here because they're going to delever. But they're not really doing that. They're paying down the deferred bit, but that's that's not what we're talking about here, right? They're, yeah. Well, if, if a lot of the wording and the strategies around future acquisition, then you could imagine acquisitions where they pay for the company or asset with script and then they do a placement alongside it and then that kind of might, 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 yeah, might be able to be used to deliver along the way. But <laughs> yeah. um, maybe maybe cash flows can service these, um, these yeah, pretty high uh, interest facilities as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a couple other angles with all these investors piling into the, to the IPO here. They're talking about, you know, Mac being able to operate much better. Matty, you might have a bit of insight here, but the assets within a larger company within Glencore don't get treated the same as if they're the, the sole asset of a company like Metals Acquisition Corp. And they've also got a pretty good reputation as owners and operators, the management I'm talking about there. So I think they'll, they'll be looking for other parts of, similar to what Northern Star did with Jundee, Newmont only took the real high grade shit, left all the fringes. Um, I think I've heard there's some stuff higher up in CSA that they might look to go to. Um, if yeah, those the big companies really operate on like right, get the good shit, flog it off. Yeah, done. So I'd say they'll employ that sort of strategy as well. Yeah, you've also got the underlying copper thematic, which everyone just loves. You know, you got to get exposure on the ASX. Where you're going to get that? These guys are reputable, and then there's the. Um, the consolidation play, so the m and the first company that comes to mind is Aurelia. They've been rumoured lately. They had a bit of a hiccup last week with the, the weather event, but their federation asset is coming online within six odd months. So they're one that have been rumoured. There's a couple other companies in, in the Cobar region there that have been rumoured that they would be the only ones that actually have a synergistic um, potential yeah. benefit. This company is like or assets like North Parks, which we know Meadows Acquisition Corp were interested in. They were in the running, but they got uh, beat out by Evolution there. And then there's other assets still within New South Wales. Woodlawn been mentioned. I'm not sure if there's any real merit to that. Well, oh, can't say bloody Bill selling, uh, selling uh, going through this period and then um, 
selling a bit of it off he's, yeah. and developing it at all. He's poised to make the coin if the price goes up. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think the, the last takeaway was one that um, i got to credit to uh, Sean Declare and the AFR is that it's not really a traditional IPO. They're, they're looking at it from the sense of there hasn't been many IPOs on the ASX for a long time and this is pretty chunky, but they're, they're placing the stock here at a discount to what the New York Stock Exchange listed shares are trading at. It's, in a sense, a, a placement. It's not a brand new IPO. You're getting interest, but you're getting it cheaper than mm. what the stock's trading at. I think I think other ones to keep in mind will be probably in North Queensland. There's a lot of a lot of consolidation probably needed up in that area. A lot of a lot of they're not even mid caps. They're all small caps. Like all got a lot of mm. bit expiration. Couple of processing plants. I think there's a lot of consolidation to be done up there. So whether they have a look at that. Golden Grove would be another one. You look at the pressures, 29 metals is under. Um, that might be something if they're under pressure, they could pick up pretty cheap. So Yeah. But, but and that's Golden just Grove, with, you, I think you'd um, – yeah, do you buy, can you buy that asset before – like let's say – yeah, I wonder, I wonder what, what the best time to buy Golden Grove would be. Or if you – would they just want to – uh, would they give away 29 metals pretty cheap just to get Capricorn copper off their hands? Who yeah, knows? I don't think you'd want to take on that liability, right? No, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I, but, yeah, there's definitely – oh, God, imagine if they got into the big bloody porphyry ones. Well, that's <laughs> it. Well, that was just in Australia what we're, we're circling there. But, you know – Oh, but even the porphyry ones in Australia, like the ones that are just sitting there waiting to be developed, but that's that's going very, very, very big if um, – Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I think when, I think it's it's an exciting – you know, story to come to the ASX. I think like the devil's in the detail with this one because a lot of the upside's kind of been given away in the financing of it, including yeah. like even, you know, copper price contingent consideration. Yeah. So it's it's not straightforward that, you know, if copper goes up, this stock does well. It's it's um the financing piece matters and wrapping your head around that um, if you, is in the detail of the prospectus. Absolutely. If you want to get into the weeds of it, I think we did a pretty good episode six odd months ago on the actual intricacies. We spoke about it for, mm. for quite a while on the streaming, all the various types of financing that they did to to get this deal away. So go back and listen to that one. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder why they are, because I heard there was like, I know there's, everyone bids overs and there's a lot of scale back. I heard there was up to a billion in the book for the IPO and they raised 325. So you wonder why they didn't raise 400 or 450 if the if the money's there. Like if the money's oh, there, you're limited you to it. what you put in the prospectus. You, oh, yeah? There's like a range you can put in the prospectus. You can't, you can't, yeah. Yeah. You can't I wonder, go back I wonder on if that was the top of the range or not. Yeah. Mm. Very interesting. All righty, guys. South 32, they have finally sold down their share in the Eagle Downs uh, Met Coal project to Stanmore, which is a an interesting announcement to read. South 32 didn't post it up. They would have deemed it immaterial, but Stanmore did. Just in the context of what we'd spoken about with South 32, specifically you, Trav, what you dived into regarding their net debt position, I think it's um, you know very, very front and centre that they're just trying to get in a bit more cash via selling down the, the 50% interest in this this project. So the deal itself, Sam, Sam Moore has bought 50% interest in Eagle Downs, upfront 15 million US, and then another US 20 million is payable on, upon the first 100,000 tonnes being mined, and then there's a cap royalty of up to US $100 million. Stanmore has also signed a term sheet to buy further 30% from the JV partner, Aquila Resources. And Stanmore, importantly, will be the manager, the the operator of this joint venture. Pretty interesting because um, no one's developed a, a new well new, new coal mine in a while, and this is a, a view to kind of well we're, we're taking a positive view on developing this. Yeah, exactly. So, getting into the the asset, it's um, important to note that it's fully permitted. That is quite key if you're you're buying an undeveloped uh, met coal project. It's it, it's an underground project, pretty close to the Potrell asset in, in Queensland. So earlier studies indicated a 40 year plus mine life. There's also a royalty that Stanmore will now assume payable to Vale. And in terms of scale, Aquila flagged it as, as 4.5 to 6 million tonnes per annum. I'm sure these guys will do their own studies and the numbers will get rejigged, but we'll, we'll sort of see as well as what sort of synergies can be pulled in from the nearby Stanmore assets and what they can do to pull down any capital costs that need to be sunk into the ground. I think um, I, th- I think it's a it's an interesting one. It's a pretty it's a decent deal for Stanmore in the sense they've only paid a small amount up front and the rest is kind of contingent on production. The big kind of question marks on this one is 
will, will you get it there? South 32, we're, we're keen to offload this asset for quite some some time. There's been reports about it for a long time, about um, them having a sale process, a few, I think a few times in the past even, um, and they haven't been able to do it. The word on the decline is that they're a pretty you know, chunky holding costs associated with this assets, asset. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass to just hold if you're not actually developing it. Um, and then I was wondering what, you know, what were South32 actually valuing this asset as on their balance sheet given um, its history? And I looked in their latest annual report and you can see that they wrote down the value of Eagle Downs or their share of it to nil um, on their, you know, on their, it was an impairment um, recognised there. And basically they'd, they'd written it down from US 100 and, $83 million, which um, I think they talk about as, as maybe being near the mark of what one of the non-binding bids were, was that fell through when they, they had a sale process in the past. So mm. it's nil. Like, this is going to be a bit of upfront consideration and some, you know, royalty associated with it. Who knows if they hold on to that royalty or not, but um, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't help play down any fears that, you know, a potential investor might have in South32's balance sheet though, does it? Getting... Yeah, it, it, it just gives you the feeling that they've gone through all their assets, everything, and they've put an extra push on. What can we sell? Who can we chase up? Or IGO, Who can we let's chase up <laughs> some royalties from? Yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, it reeks a, a bit of desperation, but who knows? They weren't really doing much with it anyway, so it's good to get a, yeah. bit, a bit of cash in the door for them, from their point of view. I can't wait to read their, their earnings on uh, Thursday. You've yeah. never been so interested in South 32 in your life, have you, Trav? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, mate, bit of north. We'll get, we'll get over to north. We've got to feed the audience over there in North America. Mate, you are the North American Show correspondent. That we're, we're with you over there. Did you see the money miners want Pascal to be our European correspondent? Oh, mate, <laughs> who else would you pick? What a bloody GC. Never seen a bloke come in so excited. How funny was Harriet comes, oh, there's a guy out the front called Pascal, and he's uh, he's very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you on the show, Pascal. Champion. No, so Cameco's uh, earnings come out the end of last week. Uh, so for those who don't know, Cameco, what, second biggest uranium producer in the world behind Kazataprom uh, or Kazatomprom. <laughs> Everyone was waiting for it. It was a lot of moving parts. And, and I guess what happened the, from a lot of, you know, talk to a couple of funds and stuff that are invested in, in the U, they, it was sort of the result they wanted, but the equities went the wrong way, <laughs> went the wrong way and they got sold off. So what happened was they, they missed guidance even after they downgraded their guidance for in that year. So they missed that. They had to disclose, they said they bought 10 million pounds off from the spot market to fill their contracts through the year. But they, they put out their 2024 guidance for 18 million pounds coming out of each of Cigar Lake and MacArthur River. So that's the, on a hundred percent basis. So, and that's the, like the nameplate capacity of those operations. So they said, no, nah, we're going to, we're guiding to full production from both of those operations and said they're only guiding to buy 2 million pounds from the spot market this year. The market's forward looking, Matty. Exactly. So, um, yeah, the guidance seems to be what saw the decline in the uranium price and the sell-off of equities. It went from, I think it was at about 106 bucks a pound, then went down to a bit below 100. I think it's yeah. back up to around 101 now. So I'm guessing the U-Bulls are saying that they won't meet that guidance. So. Oh, who, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Well, you can't, can't bloody predict. I hope they do. Um, I guess the, the interesting thing will be if they don't, mit, don't hit that guidance, then they're again, forced to buy off the spot market yeah. to fill fill those contracts. So a bit of a bit of a double whammy there. So look at, <laughs> you keep hearing about these contracts they have in place and what it does to their realised price going forward. So check this out. This is what it is heading out to 2028. So look, even if the uranium price went up to $140 a pound, their realised price would be $76 in 2028 and only 59 in 2024. Wow. So at the spot price right now at 100, wow. they'll realise 58 for this year and only 72 in 2028. But wow. the, those contracts were in place for my understanding, Kamiko to survive when the uranium price wasn't they pretty much did it to save themselves. So they're thinking years and years down the road, uh, not not now. So, but they're Ceiling price. they're generating they're they're generating cash flow. So, will they look for other forms of supply to uh, get themselves out of these? Con 
not be as exposed to these contracts and get other suppliers that are more exposed to the spot. Who knows? But it'd be uh, they're an interesting one to follow now. Uh, the North American, it's North like, American yeah, correspondent being hedged at a low price, so you buy an asset in order to yeah improve get, your hedge book, get more, and it doesn't look as bad. So interesting um, one, mate. Yeah, that's a horrible. That's a horrible looking. Oh God! Because what have they got? I think I looked at they got four or five hundred million in cash, US, and one point eight billion in debt. Because uh, obviously invested, bought forty nine percent of Westinghouse, and yeah, so yeah. it's um, yeah, interesting, very interesting. Oh, oh bloody love uranium now. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> North American correspondent. Pleasure to be a service. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, cheers, boys. Love your bloody work. I'm going to a pissy lunch Good after work, this. Uh, down the cot, bloody in me boardies and thongs. Can't wait. Love but, it. Good stuff. Right, thanks to bloody verifying K drill at the top of the show. Give bloody. Give Josh a buzz. Uh, we've got Grant on here, mate. We've got Josh, buddy. There's just verify people everywhere. Get in touch and uh, come have a, a drink with them if you want to know more about the product on Friday. Verify without knee. Verify without a knee, mate. Investor Hub. Give Rory an Investor Hub a call. Email in the show notes. Bloody another GC. Rory with a H. Rory <laughs> Rory with a H. Investor Hub. Spelt exactly <laughs> like that. Mate, DSI Underground, Smet Power and Technology, McMahon Mining Title Services, Anytime Expert. KCA site services, Brooks Airways, and K Drill, which we said at the start. Hooteroo. The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only and does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation, and needs.